up, everybody? It's James. Thank you for thank you for coming back to another episode of What's To You. Before we get started, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a review, rate us on Spotify, all that good stuff. Drop a comment. Let us know what you like, dislike about the show. It's greatly appreciated. It helps me get better. Uh, with that said, this week, I'm sent down with A3 Auto. Man, I got to ask you, what's to you? What's to A3 Auto? Man, you know what? I'm just... I'm just a father of six, man. That's all. That's all. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah, man. How been long has... Yeah, go ahead. No, I've just been a husband, been a dad, brother. That's all. Yeah. Hey, I, I know about the dad life. I'm not I'm not on the, the husband yet, so my respect. <laughs> um, all right, so let's kind of get started. Who is A3 Auto? When people go to play your music, what, what do they hear? Man, you can just hear, hear a kid from... Houston, Texas, third world, just my journey. Um, music is just an outlet for me, you know. Kind of when you listen to me, uh, I kind of go all, I like to float. You know, once sometimes I might be sad, next time I might be happy. You know, uh, I'm just trying to express what I can feel and relate to others with my music when you hear me. Yeah, word. And that's good, that's good. So when people listen to you, what do you want them to take away from their songs? Man, honestly, uh depends on what the song is talking about. You know, if I'm talking about some heartbreak, then hopefully they can talk uh take away uh what about some talking points, whether um what the heartbreak was about, um, what I was going through. So maybe they can relate to some specific points in them in themselves, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You how you so how long have you been doing music? Man, um You've been rocking I'm, with me for a while. That's why yeah. I, I gotta ask. Uh, you, you know, to be honest with you, man, um middle school says oh eight, oh eight. Or really, yeah. really I really got serious with you kind of understanding, you know, it's it's a, it's a business at the end of the day. Um, when I first started doing it, it was just record, 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 put it out. Then a producer asked me, say, dude, what are you doing with all these songs? <laughs> put it out there, man. Like, what are you doing? That kind of made me wake up like, yeah, what what am I doing? You know? So, uh, but yeah. So what, I'm, what I've been doing since then was just keep releasing music, um, write for others, uh, put it on streaming platforms, and just trying to get paid from the Roy Bitches. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what. So, yeah. does music like the music, the love for music, kind of stem from something in your family, or you know what? Honestly, I got a story for you. It was a childhood friend, a uh, long, long time ago, and he was a writer himself. So it kind of just rubbed up on me, and I kind of just took it from there. And uh, so I got to get that to a friend, but I'm I'm pretty sure he had seen him and lighted something in me. You know what I mean? Yeah. That there it was just kind of kindled through him if that makes sense yeah no it does it, you know i may not be the next but i will be the spark you know for the next mind so that's that's the vibe i got from it that's what's up man so since middle school in 08 so let's kind of talk about what you've been up to lately you have an ep called vibrations tell me about <laughs> that man oh man vibrations man gotta speak for itself you know the world is made of vibrations you know um the title it just came from i'm, I'm a very in tune person you know, I, I think I feel everything. And so I just wanted something to kind of express that, you know? Yeah. That's where the title and the, the theme kind of stems from. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. I agree with the point. Uh, every, everything is energy. Everything is vibration. So that's awesome. What kind of, what was your process in creating this? Man, I'm, I might be relatively odd, man. I, I like to go on walks. Like walks kind of spark, spark some thinking process and um you know you know what scientific proven being in an airplane too it just opens up some kind of a, I, I was reading some kind of study said being in an airplane don't don't um read a book i mean no read, you can read a book don't listen to music do something creative you know mm. what i mean? uh, mm. so a lot of my i'm up there in the air and um yeah, yeah. that's that's where uh vibrations came from it's a mix of a little sexiness with a little hurt as well yeah yeah so let's kind of go into you know, how that kind of rolled out. Because you got a pretty exclusive press release from Lyrical Lemonade, man. How did you go about getting that, and what was it like to work with them? Man, to be honest, this kind of doing my due diligence. Uh, you know, you got to kind of do the the marketing slash the uh, networking, as you do. Uh, uh, my man, shout out to my man, Jax, over there in Lyrical Lemonade. Man, he's a real one. He, uh, I actually wanted him to check out one song. So he said, let me get back to you. He checked out the whole EP, read up, written up the whole EP for lo out, out of love. You know, most of these bloggers are charging ridiculous fees and stuff like that, man. He did it out of love. 
it was uh I was very humbled and I really appreciate it, man. That's awesome. Shout out to Jax at Lyrical Lemonade. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's huge. Cause yeah, a lot of, a lot of people do charge for a little bit of everything. I'm slowly starting to learn why, but that's awesome yeah. that he did it out of love. Yeah, um, he did. He did. So on vibrations, man, what's what has been the standout track that you've gotten a lot of feedback from? A lot of people are like, yo, that's my favorite track. What what is that track? You know, honestly, it's it's not even the one I released as a single body on me. It had to be Take It There. Uh that was produced by AJ. That's um in house footage I've been working with for some years now. It's been a disconnect from the last couple of years, but he helped me put together that EP, which is truly magical in my eyes. And uh, but uh, I'm sorry, Mac. I went off topic. What was the question? What's this? What's the stand? What are the people saying about the project? Because you've accumulated a mass amount of streams on Spotify uh, alone. So it comes. The you were saying the standout track that uh the producer that you kind of had disconnect. You guys came back together. You built this. Uh, now, my question is, what is the standout track that people are like, gravitating to most? Um, honestly, it's Take It There. Take, yeah. Take, that's just a, you know what? I get mixed reactions, but it seems like kind of the bloggers and the ones who posted more, they like to take it there track. What's your standout track? <laughs> and so if you, so for people that are first listening right now, and they're like, how do I, how do I get to know who A3 Auto is through his music, from the sound, everything? What song would you send them to off this project? Like you have to listen to this one first. I go body on me. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I go at okay. Now tell tell us why. Tell us why. It's a it's a little sexy. It's, I'm not kind of singing, but it's almost kind of you know dragging my words. Um, like you said, just a little sexy feel. Got a little boss to it. Um, I think I think that's the one. My that's you know. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. I. I do, before we wrap it up with the uh, vibration, I do want to just give you a round of applause. Um, 500,000 streams, you're pushing in on it, so make sure you all uh-huh. check out the EP. That's awesome, man. That's one hell of an accomplishment. Um, so you've done some collaborations in your time, and yeah. that's actually, the first track you sent me was with one uh, one artist that I really enjoy listening to, and that's kind of put me on and got me hip to you, Mikey 100K. Kind of tell me about, that relationship you built with him because you have more than one track with him, right? Yes, I actually have some unreleased with him too in the vault. Um, that boy <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Man, Mikey, Mike. I, I go back as far as Mikey when he was signed to um, Hazardous Records. Uh, he was worked by Mike West. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this was about uh, five, six years ago. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually. I actually uh, discovered to do it on YouTube. You know, I'd be just listening to all kind of music, and just his sound just stuck with me. It's it's been ever since. The Kendrick's music just kind of just, I can relate to a lot of his songs. It just catches me, man. You you know how it is. I mean, you you probably a fan of Mikey's, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you you also have collaboration. So it started with you just checking them out, hearing them on YouTube, and then did you just email? How did you go about building that relationship up? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I, I sent them a DM. Uh, I said then it was a song. I don't know the song he dropped, but um I was asking him, yo, 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 at the end of the song it faded out. Like, what did you say? And he really did me back like this is what I said. This is when I was kind of a fanboy back then. Yeah. But yeah, just kind of kind of saying what is his creative process. I see he be in LA, he be moving around, just kind of so we can link up. Uh yeah, I just shout him a message and say, Yo, I'm a huge fan. Let's let's uh put something together. Have you guys met? No, I have not met uh Mikey yet. Yeah. Not yet. No. That's dope. The, uh, so a big thing that COVID did was make people actually like talk and build relationships online. So I think that's actually really dope that you guys have built that working relationship. You know, hopefully it comes to like a genuine bond that you guys will have one day. Um, but as far as me, I think that's dope that you built that online. So yeah. that means the communication has been on point. Everybody's work ethic. Everybody's, you know, falling dead. That's what's up. Cause that's hard to come by a lot. So I think that's dope, man. You also uh, have a collaborations with Twenty Four Hours. Tell me about that one. Well, he probably club. Oh man, that's my guy. Uh, now I have met Twenty Four, and come to find out, man, his his I know I don't know his family, but his family went to the same high school we went to. You know, it's crazy. So small world. Yeah, small world. He was he was out in uh, Houston at a uh, shoe event. He was doing a meet and greet. So I mm. said, man, I gotta get down there. <laughs> you know? Like this is back in 2017, so I got down there, kind of linked up with him, chopping it up. I stayed the whole night, kind of just 
everybody was just networking, just did my networking, did videos and uh, the pictures that night. And uh, but from that night, I built a relationship. I got a sale, we kind of chopped it up, and then um, he was in town. Man, <laughs> we need a record. Like I think, yeah. You know, he sent he sent me. Uh, he couldn't. He wasn't able to link up in town, but he did. She he did. Um, send me some tracks and like go through these. Send me send me back the waves. We all like it and let me know. And uh, we came up this track called uh, "Runaway." Yeah, yeah. That that's special, man. Cause twenty is a he's like a really favorite artist of mine. Ever since he was uh, uh what was it? Where is he? Where's Rizzy? Yeah. Then he. Fast forward to twenty four. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, see, I didn't get hit to I didn't get hit to twenty four till he was already twenty four. So, oh really? Yeah. Oh, man, so out of JD, so so deaf and all that. Dang. Yeah, I knew I knew he had uh, motion, but like like uh, it was back when I started the YouTube channel. That's like when I first got hit to him because he was one of the first artists I ever posted. And he he hit me and said thanks for posting it. I was you know I'm geeky. I'm like man, it's my little ass YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Uh, yeah. So that shows you how he. You said what? Kind of shows you how he a real one. You know he kind of reached out to you. Thank yeah. You, thank. You. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking like less than a thousand subscribers said thanks. I was like, oh shit, that's what's up. <laughs> um. But yeah, back back to you. So what's it? Like you're get, you're getting these collaborations and things like that, man. What kind of influenced your style, and then what kind of led you to go these directions with these two? I know Mikey was because, uh, you know, you just related to him. And twenty four, what was your reason for outside of like you met him before? What was your reason, like, man, we should work? Just been a huge fan. Yeah, just a, I don't know, just terrible, bro. Like the effects, the uh, and um. The, the stuff, the stuff he used with his voice is just magic, dude. I just, I just love it. So yeah. I just had to get some, and you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, nah, I feel that. That's what's up. Let's, I, let's kind of go ahead, go ahead. I, it's a, he's a platinum artist as well, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something. Yeah, and you got one with him, like so. Um, let's kind of shift the focus back to you, man. Let's explore some of your other influences with music, like. Okay, it's them from eighth grade. It's them from a homie. But when you create your songs, who does your who do, who influences you the most? I, um, I want I want to say it's a certain person or thing. Just just my love for this music. Yeah, my love for music. And um, what? Well, well, you asking maybe like the inspiration um of uh, writing the songs and creating the music. What keeps you going? Ooh. <laughs> that's a good one um i guess i just said it my love for music this this, this love in it and seeing reactions to it you know it's um it's a great feeling when you can actually play some of your music or somebody messages you, hey man i like that or i uh i went through that i feel that thank you for this you know i get that time to time too oh i get hey man that wasn't so great you should try this i just love everybody's uh feedback and constructive criticism yeah that's what's up it's it's so you're pretty open to receiving criticism and feedback. Oh man, yeah. If you're not, then I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you got you got to be if you want to do it for real. There you go. So, and that's a, like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's kind of, let's talk let's let's kind of go into that. So your growth as an artist, you know, you started as a youngin. It's 2023. What has that path been like? It's just, it's been um it's been been kind of a bumpy one, trying to uh at first I started off as auto a u t o, and it was a you know it was a good thing but not uh not a good thing everything was auto like yeah 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 but then as well everybody else was too, you know, <laughs> so I had to yeah. go through a, a uh, resurgence so to say, you know and change kind of change it up to the a three o u t o which is um uh, a is just kind of keeping the auto. And the three is from Third Ward, up from Third Ward, Texas, a little neighborhood from Houston. Uh, so That's I kind of went things, did that, and actually, it, auto was a whole. It was a, a, a some, uh, some slang for our food back then. You know, it stands for all of us taking over. And I'm just give you a brief history. Um, I don't know if you heard of Orange Juice Jones. I've seen that, seen that chick standing in the rain song. He he, he stopped, first artist signed a Def Jam. I'm you, familiar, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So his son, Mookie Jones, is who I, you know, did some, um, I don't know if you heard of him, but he was a battle rapper back then, still doing his thing. That's kind of where the auto thing kind of stemmed from. You know what I mean? And what did you say it stands for? We was battle rappers back then in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So all I, I was, of us taking over. Out of the crowd. Yeah. 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 We did that 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 way. And they they actually still out there going hard with it. You know. <laughs> That's dope as fuck. That's dope as fuck. That's dope as fuck. So yeah, that's what's up. So you start. So you even started out as a battle rapper. All right, man. Hey, hey, I was got <laughs> them. Them dudes were serious with it, but you know what? No, no, no. To be honest, no. I didn't start off as a battle rapper. It started okay. off as as writing little songs and then kind of transitioned there to back to where I'm at now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I be, hey, they a different breed, bro. I respect the game, though. I respect the game. It, that'll yeah. definitely help you sharpen your pen, though. That, that too. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, what we're gonna do next? We're gonna jump into the. I sent out suggestions of what artists want to make special about the interview, and you chose Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire with A Three Auto. Ready? Go. Favorite track you've ever recorded? It seems. <laughs> Dream collaboration. Lil Uzi. Biggest musical influence? 1K Few. Favorite venue you've performed at? Warehouse Live. Favorite artist to listen to right now? 1K Few. Favorite lyric you've ever you've written? <laughs> yeah, uh, do I say the lyric? Yeah. If you got a problem, speak your mind. I'll solve it with the chrome like an equal. Sorry. Most memorable fan interaction. Oh, man. Can I sign your CD? Uh, vinyl or digital? Oh, digital. One word to describe your musical style. That's the Barbie. Best advice you've received as an artist. You're going to take some L's. <laughs> That's what's up, man. You gonna take some L's. Who told you that? You remember? Uh, uh, actually, uh, DJ Cali, DJ Cali. I was uh, oh, was what? He was he was doing some kind of promo back in Houston. So I, I ran to the radio station. I had to go had to go get with him. He said uh, one thing. He's, two things he told me. He said uh, keep going. You're gonna take some L's. And then he said, I see you when I see you. I didn't understand it at the time, but I understand it now. All right, so break it down for our listeners. What is I see? I'll see you when I see you. Making enough noise? Yeah, see you. Word. Word. That's dope. So, man, that's a crazy interaction, too. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was intense, too. It, it was really chill. I kind of ran up on it. We almost looked like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> How do you navigate the balance between like staying true to your artistic vision and responding to the demands or expectations of the music industry? Oh, that's a lovely question. Uh, just keeping my core values in check, I would say. I'm not trying to, you know, for me, it's still adapt or die. We all know that. Uh, yeah, just, just stand true to self and um, whatever decision, decisions we, we, we tend to make, just live with those decisions, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So are does it when does a specific instance like come to mind where you had to make a tough decision to maintain your integrity? Man, a couple do. A couple do. A couple I want I want to have to bring up with some of labor situations, but um Yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep it at that one. Okay. That's fair enough cuz you, you said you you okay, so I want to circle back to this cuz I you said this and I I wasn't aware of this. Cause you you should have put it in your notes. Cause this is fire. So you said you wrote for people. Are you able to disclose who you write for, or kind of what goes into the songwriting process? So let's start with, our um, who yeah. are some of the people you written for? It's so far it's, it's only been local local artists, just some up and coming artists. Hey man, you know, yeah, uh, no one, no, but I'm working on trying to get some placements. That's my that's kind of my next journey. Yeah, like sync placements or just just songwriting credits. Yeah, it's all right, Prince. No, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. I, I have a friend. It's not about me, so I won't even. But, uh, uh, but that's what's up. So, 
when it comes to songwriting for other people, do you kind of, is your pen kind of like from their point of view or they like, tell us the songwriting process. Do they just buy the lyrics from you or? Oh man, you know what? That's to be honest, it's a mix of both. You get your special request or you just get, hey man, send me, send me some stuff you got in the vault. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. That's that's what's up. I what made you what made you be okay with songwriting? Man, just having so so much, so uh, just writing so much. Uh, wanted wanted to be able to because some stuff when you write and you recall, you be like, ah, voice ain't really too good for that one. Ah, this I can hear somebody else on this, or somebody else on that. You yeah. Know? Nah, that's what's up. So so, do you approach them or it's just been both ways? Ah, oh, both ways. I'm I'm out there hustling. Hey, what you? Hey, you need some hooks. You need some verses. And then, yeah. um, surprisingly, I get a lot of requests of, uh, do you know songwriters? Do you songwrite? So that ha- kind of helps out as well. That's what's up, man. I think that's really fucking dope. <laughs> uh, so I guess with that, when you say like songs don't really fit for you, you think it might work for someone else. Um, have what's a special request you've received where you've had to sit down and kind of go from that artist's point of view? Ooh, man, it was, uh, what kind of record was this? Um, it, it was most challenging, just a song called Why, Why Did You Lie? And R.I.P. to one of my homies, R.B. Jones, he uh, passed away with heart conditions a couple of years ago. Um, it was a race rate of, I cannot, I cannot explain the track, Why Did You Lie? It was mostly R.B.-ish with a one rap verse in there. So okay. what they want. Like they wanted a two eights with a rap verse of four, you know. Um, the labels were, they already had background vocals and all that. All they needed was just verses. Just verses. And it was kind of challenging because I, I said something back. I was like, yeah, they, you like that? Can, oh, remind you, they weren't even there for the process. They just, okay, just record us something, record it like this, send this back to us with that, you know, if you like it. You know, it's kind of problematic. I mean, like, okay, we're going to we'll make it happen for you. So after maybe, what, maybe six or seven attempts, kind of send back the vocals. They loved it. And that that's the thing I love about this journey. You never know. Um, it's Every day is different. And uh, every reaction with, with people is different. But at the end of the day, they got the, uh, the product that they wanted. So, Yeah. That's what you said. You, so you sent it six or seven times or you recorded it six to be quick? I mean, yeah, you never know what, uh, you know, what people like. People like to, just like you go to a store, you might not want something. You take it back, get something different. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, kinda... I feel you. That's a that's a that's a process. So it it sounds like it does have its uh challenges when it comes to that. It's not as easy as sitting yeah. down in the studio writing it out. Um, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you said they weren't even there, so they really couldn't even catch the vibe of what you were like y'all you couldn't even catch the vibe of what they wanted. You just read the text like <laughs> Yeah, do it through the phone. You do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um I guess Let's go into storytelling. It sounds like you have a ton of stories to to share. I mean, DJ Khaled, Mikey, one hundred K, twenty four hours, like, and I feel like there's so much more that you haven't even hinted at. But um, when it comes into storytelling in your music, how does that play a role? It does. Sometimes uh, I like the storytelling. I saw, um, sometimes I like the free fall. But now you really want to have a point. <laughs> you know, you just want to be. There, I mean, there is okay, but uh, I think I believe storytelling is is really important because it, it can grab the audience in, make them want more, make them oh, is that more? Is that it? Opposed to just saying a bunch of stuff, you know. I I think storytelling can have a little bit of longer jeopardy, you know. Yeah. So how do you incorporate personal experiences or narratives into your songs that create that like deeper connection with the audience? Ah, uh, yeah. Just just my my um. Like you said, my real, genuine, personal experiences. Put it, put it. Well, if it's in there, you, I, I tend to. Well, you you know how you can associate the lyrics now. You can write your lyrics and you can put what it means and stuff like that under it. So yeah. kind of record. You can you can sing a rap song one way, but somebody might take that the whole another three sixty and thought you mean something else, right? Yeah. So you can get that point of, as you cross as you can across inside your lyrics, and then you can you know. Have your team, or do you kind of write what that means, you know, in the, the um, associations? So you will rap genius. <laughs> yeah. So do kinda. you for for what? What's your release process? 
for songs because you kind of you just broke down annotations and things like that. And I'm sure the people that are gonna that the artists that listen to this won't be that familiar with that process. So what's that process like too? The release. So can you elaborate on that for me more? All right. So, um, are you familiar with La Russell? Yes. Okay. So he broke down. You know, I uploaded DSPs. I go to Sound Exchange, Song Exchange, or Song Trust Sound Exchange. He goes okay. through all the. He goes through all those processes, things like that. What's your release look like? Nice, nice. Kind of, kind of the same thing. I um, you know, you just, you want to you want to write it. You want to go record it. Show the visual if you can to it. Um, ask Captain. I like. I, um, that's one of the things I like to do. Copyright.gov. It's uh, we talking uh legal kind of yeah uh, all of it. I want to know your whole process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to ask Captain. Uh, spot. Uh, ask Captain. Uh, Copyright.gov. It. And uh, yeah. Then put it on. Put it all online. Then uh, it's a lot goes into it, man. I, I I like to do some um marketing campaigns behind the stuff. Uh, I really want to tap more into ads. Like ads. Musical ads, uh, like, Facebook and YouTube, and yeah, what what's the hesitation with those with that process? No hesitation, just kind of. Somebody I forgot who I listened to or who told me this, but he he said it's not. This is what I learned and what I'm I'm learning. And I'm acquiring now. It's not about having a hundred different social medias. It's about having that one that you on, that you're running, and you know doing your best with that. I mean, you have five. You got five of them that's popping so well. Or you might not. So just utilize that tool that works best for you and just, just keep it going, you know. And and it's one word, too, and I think you relate to this. Excuse me, consistency, you know. Uh, you know, consistency breeds results is what I like to say. Word. That's real. And you're 100% right. right. Uh, and, and just to speak on the social media, the algorithms just, re they respond to it more the more you're on their platforms. Which... <laughs> Which sucks, but at the same time, you got to do what you got to do. Because I know, no, just dude. to speak about ads, before you before you go that route, this is some advice I'll give you. We ran ads for Joel Stevenson. We ran ads like, I mean, for an, for where he is, it was maybe $1,000 at the end of the day, which isn't, isn't a lot in ad spend. But, man, when we tried to go back to organic, it did work. We're still building on the organic, so that yeah. I just, I just, it just because once you start spending money, they're just gonna make you suffer and want you to go spend more money. So, so and you've built a good following so far without it. So I that's why I, I give the warning like just don't overdo it because once you start spending, they're gonna put you in position to always spend. <laughs> oh, good, no, good, good luck for sure. Yeah, because it's a, it's can be a money pit. Um, but it's not your journey has been a. It's it's kind of inspiring. It's different because you also said you went over to Genius to break down your lyrics and things like that. Do you, so? Do you actually go through the whole process of putting lyrics on like Spotify, uh, YouTube, and things like that? Do you also like even the little things as well? The dirty yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun, but it. I mean, you get that one listener, and he's just, and uh, I wonder what he's saying. Like, like, like you, your Mikey instance. <laughs> What'd you say at the end? And next, yeah. you know, you're working with him. So I, but you know, so you never know. But I think it's good that you're thorough, because a lot of a lot of upcoming artists are not as thorough. So I commend that. Um, looking ahead, though, what are some of your aspirations or goals for your music career? Man, I, I love that. Oh uh, man, whether it's um, you know, recording or writing, you know, just just trying to record something that go viral, you know. It, 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 we all wanna it's just all about at least getting one or trying to get one. I mean you don't want one, right? Um as far as the um, goals and stuff like that, just setting minor goals for myself, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly. Um well, I have one like a yearly goal, trying to the project I want vibrations at least hit a meal before the year's out, or right at the year, you know. Just setting goals and try your best to hit them. Sometimes you might not hit that. That's okay. Just set some new goals and set and um and set them higher and just keep going. On, you know, yeah. Your successful people figure out how to solve their problems. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Cause you're all, you're almost at half a mil, so you definitely push that. I would. Um, 
But yeah, th- those are some good goals to have. And you always want to exceed the bar. You want it like, it's like, okay, maybe I really only want a half a mil, but like, I'm going to try to get this mil anyway. Yeah. Cause, you know, so I feel that too. Um, are there any like dream collaborations or that you want to have in the near future? I mean, it's just so many artists, right? <laughs> it's just hard to see. Like, I just want to work with them all. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we all do, but. Um, uh, man, I've been on a kind of a, the um, gospel positive way, man. I like a lot of those artists over there, bro. Like Lecrae, his artists. His, uh, I don't know if you heard his record label, man. Them the boys over there, bro. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that's a good one, too. He's doing his thing. Yeah. He's doing his thing. So are, are there any, like, dream venues that you kind of aim for to perform Ooh. at in the near future? You know what? Honestly, bro, I'm not even on a performing wave. But if I were to, to be honest with you, yeah, House of Blues. Really? So let's talk. I want to talk about that, though, because, you know, that that's that's my bag. How come? It's... So is it just because you don't want to go out like that? Or is it because you're a husband and a father? You know what? I just, I just I'm just not into it no more. You know, I'm just not into the whole. I, I've done it. it I, y'all, man, it's amazing. I'm just, I just kind of want to write. Like you said, I just want to write, record, do my thing, do some visuals. And, um, yeah, just don't want to perform, bro. Yeah. Nah, Have I you heard, it. is it kind of uh, rare or what? Yeah. I think it's, I think it's rare, but I think as a promoter, you should pick and choose when you perform. So it's like, yeah. So, like, I've seen artists, like, wear out their local area to where they can't get people to come anymore. So now it's like someone big comes to town, the promoter's not going to hit them up because he sees that you're not doing numbers, you know? So yeah. it's just, it's things like that. I do, it depends, depending on what you want out of music. And it sounds like you just want kind of an income from your passion. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you might have chose the wrong industry, but <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just a little challenging in the sense of you only really get sync or you know maybe songwriting credits and things like that. That's the real that's the that's the quicker money in the sense of uh, you know going viral because viral. Who knows what actually plays into that? You know, outside of attention and things like that. Because I've anyway, but yeah. So I I that is a first for me where it's like I don't really like performing, but you know, but it's not it's not everyone's thing. You know, I got people. There's people with a hundred thousand you hundred of thousands of streams. You probably I don't perform that often, but you know, people are still listening, and that's the important part. And like you said, you've been you're obviously doing something well. Your project has almost five hundred thousand streams, so it's like the performing isn't the selling point for you. It's something else. So people must be really connecting to your music, and that's that's a big thing to say because for for me and a lot of people close to me. Once we experience something live and we feel it live, that's the selling point for us. Whereas with a lot of your music, bro, I ain't gonna lie, with a lot of your music, I can turn that on around the crib and I'll find myself like singing and stuff like that. So that's, so it's like, I don't necessarily have to see this live to feel this, but you know, so I, I do commend that route too, because I love concerts. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess um, to wrap this up, man, what's, one piece of advice that so two things what's one piece of advice that you carry heavy with you throughout your journey oh man what do you uh the piece of oh man so much good advice um a lot of people are gonna try to pull you different directions go different ways um and that's fine um but just keep in mind, keep have have a vision, you know. Um have a vision and it it'll, it'll take you where you want to be. Cause other people's visions tend to just lead you down the path. He was like, How did I get here? I mean, maybe it worked for others. I'm kinda I maybe just speaking for myself. But uh stay true to self. I I would say have your own vision. Yeah. And that is that the advice you would share with people to have your own vision? It is. Yeah, and make sure make sure it aligns with who you're working with in a sense, and it aligns with who you are. You know, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Where can people follow you to kind of connect with you more and and or stream your music? Oh man, uh, 
Spotify, A3, A3, O-U-T-O. That's one of my um, favorite um, platforms. And then IG, A3, O-U-T-O. Word. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me and having this conversation. Thank you for answering the question, what's to you? I feel like everyone learned a lot today. I know I did. Um, and I just want to wish you luck. If I'm ever on your side of the country, man, I'll definitely hit you up. I would love to just see your process in person because I think that's so dope and how active you are because you seem very motivated, and I respect that a lot. James, man, it's been a pl- James, it's been a pleasure. I, I, I just want to thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Good, good Boss Radio for just putting on, man. Y'all put on for so many different artists, bro, and it's crazy. Um, keep doing what y'all doing, man. Sky's the limit, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for taking the time and have a good evening. Okay, well. King, King.